Well, within, a, within one month period, is how often do you feel like you could potentially be in danger? Well, let me put it this way. Ask me about a day and I can tell you at least one or two moments when I could be in potential danger as a woman. So This is important. Like very, very important. So what is the one of the number one things you're looking for from a masculine man? If a man's domain is the domain of tension mm -hmm. and you're around masculine men that are really grounded, solid, non-reactive and good with tension, how does that make you feel? It feels safe. They're creating that container so she feels safe. <laughs>
Yeah. Oh, it's very nice. Like, finally, I feel something from you. I'm getting a connection with you. And uh, I, feel, I feel you're present in front of me, which is very nice. Awesome. Awesome. And so tension causes a reaction. Now, the reason I showed you that was what was I trying to do? I was trying to get rid of reaction in the environment. So if I looked at her, I didn't want a lot of reaction because reaction to me at that time seemed dangerous. If I cause a reaction in her, I have to deal with, the with, with what comes from that. But if you want to change your life, you want a bigger life, you want to meet women, you need reaction. So if I click one domino, it clicks another and it causes a chain reaction that can go on for a while. And this is true everywhere in life. Everything we do causes a chain reaction. But if you never leave your bedroom and you stare at a computer all day, you're not causing much chain reaction in the physical world. So if I want to meet a girl and I'm constantly looking away, I'm, I'm avoiding that chain reaction. But if I look her in the eyes, I'm gonna actually create more tension. If I narrow my gaze a little bit, I'm gonna create more tension. If I widen my gaze, I'm gonna decrease the tension. And so what I'm doing is playing with this idea of a chain reaction and they feel it. You've been, how long have you ladies been communicating on this level? Like pretty much your whole lives, right? Yeah, basically that, that's what we're designed to do is like have a wide range of emotion that we explore and we would expect it to come back to us from other people. And right. we get it from other women, but from men, depends on the men. <laughs> Some men, do, do you see men that just don't get it a lot? They don't get, like you give them yeah, something. Yeah, and they, they're like completely off. They think you're either rejecting them or they, they get a complete opposite meaning of what you're trying to express to them or get out of them. So sometimes you're giving them a little bit of tension and they think you're rejecting them. What does that look like? What do you do that causes the guy, then, then the guy thinks he's being rejected? What are you doing? Well, I'm like playing a little bit with the gazing and things. If I'm, I'm looking a little bit away, I'm rejecting his, uh, his presence, maybe become confused confused around it. So. so you're playing with the tension. So the tension starts to build. See, there's a there's a balance to tension too. Too much is, is not good and too little is. So there's this sweet spot and women are really good at looking for that sweet spot. So you look at them and it starts, the tension starts to build and then you want to release a little bit, bring it down into your body and then bring it back. And what does he do? He goes, oh, He's like, oh, she doesn't want to see me uh, or she doesn't want to see me or whatever. And he feels really rejected and like turns and leaves. Exactly. So this is the idea of tension and reaction. When you start to see how much your tension is causing reactions, like a trampoline causes a reaction in the world, you'll want to start playing with it more and more. This brings us to, this, to the second uh, idea that I want to discuss with her is that tension is, uh, it all starts with how you're being in the stillness first. And this is a weird concept because I'm saying here, you got a lot of you guys are thinking I got to take action to create tension. And this is where the mistake comes in is if I'm filled with anxiety, worry, doubt, and fear, I don't like my starting point. I don't like where I'm at right now. And I try to create tension from a negative starting point. Then, uh, and this is one I don't think I've discussed a lot. This, this is gonna cause usually a negative reaction, a reaction you're not gonna like. So if I'm sitting here going, I, I, gotta, I gotta create tension with girls, I gotta create tension with girls, I'm gonna make strong eye contact. And I go the opposite of what I did earlier, which is numbing out, trying to get rid of tension. And I'm like, hi. <laughs> How you doing? And I'm pushing that tension really hard. How does that feel? Yeah, that, that's terrible because it's like the push makes you like want to back up and like turn around and leave most of the time. Exactly. So there's this simple idea that, that you can have too much too. This is that balance, huh? <laughs> we want to play with a balance. So um, so that balance is huge. And, and so we got tension in, in, in where we're getting rid of the tension. And then we got overcompensation. And over, so what I mean by is tension and stillness is who you're being before you move already enjoying the tension and playing with the tension. Do you like your starting point? Am I comfortable in my body? Do I feel pretty good about myself? Do I like who I am? And if that is the case, then I can, I can add a little tension before I even say words, just by using eye contact, just by, or if I say something simple, instead of going for some big piece of tension, just a little bit, like, like, so how's your day? And that little bit of touch, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can pull back away. But if let's say I'm really like not feeling good about myself, I'm like, I, I gotta create tension. I gotta get her to like me. <laughs> I have to do something. And then I go, hey, so how's your day going? And then there's that <laughs> sense of what? What happens? Yeah, it's like uh, forcing things, whereas the first time it felt like caring and like, how was your day? It feels very nice and caring. Uh, the second time it was like very pushy to it. Like how would I want to cringe and 
response for you and it's really not, not pleasant. And so we're either avoiding tension again or we're using too much tension or we're using tension and that too much tension is usually caused by reactiveness to our, how we feel about ourselves in that moment. We're not enjoying our, our day to day, who we are, our baseline. So it's like, is your baseline, are you a happy guy? Are you happy without her? And are you saying, I feel great. Do you want to come join me in this feeling good and have a cup of tea with me? You know, you want to have a cup of coffee with me because I feel great. Come join me. And that's that baseline is huge. So we got two things here now. We've got tension as it causes a reaction. You want to you want to cause just the right amount of reaction. So you hit that trampoline too hard. You go, let's say you go flying off the trampoline. You hit the trampoline too little. Nothing happens. And then the other one is I'm pushing the tension. I mean, I'm either pushing the tension too much when trying to compensate for insecurity, or I relax, start to learn to enjoy myself, and I use the tension in a sense to invite her into my reality. And this is different. So I wanna go deeper into these topics. The third thing I wanna cover in this series is that tension, if properly applied, and this is what I want you guys to understand, it's not really tension. Tension's a concept in your mind. There is tension in the sense if I look at her, there's more tension than if I look away, but the only thing that makes the tension uncomfortable or unfun or like in this tight resistance is my concepts, my own concepts about the tension. So if I think the tension is going to get me rejected, I don't like who I am and I'm, I'm creating tension with her. Now she's going to look at me and she's going to have a chance to judge me. Then that that tension starts to create this uh, this resistance inside of me and I push away. Now, if I'm comfortable with the tension, I actually enjoy it like a good massage. Like I'm, I've talked about this before, a massage can be too light, it can be too hard. Yes. It can be just right where it feels really good. There's just perfect flow. Yes. So go ahead. That's usually the right mixing between soft and hard. It's just yes. there are areas that you have to like play with. So you have to ease your way in. Yes. yes. And, and it's literally, this is going on all the time in seduction. We're starting with a little bit and building our way up. This is how sex works too. It's, it's, there's a reason all this works this way. And you work your way up. To, to a big crescendo of, of, like even a massage, I'll go in and as a massage therapist, I used to be one, and I would go in and I'll start slight, warm the area up, and then I'll go a little deeper, and then eventually I can get in there with a whole elbow and the person hardly even knows I'm using my elbow, but I'm in there really deep working out knots because I've eased my way in slowly, and then, I, then when I come out, you ease your way out so there's not a shock to the body. Mm -hmm. And it's fun for them. They enjoy it. It's therapeutic. It's healthy. It's the same thing in communication. So the communication will get deeper and deeper and deeper. The third thing I'm talking about is flow state. Tension, just with the right amount of tension that's perfectly relaxed, you create flow state. This nice flow from you to me. It's like a ball bearing that's greased perfectly, still has just enough tension on it, but it, flow, it doesn't feel like tension anymore. It feels more like a flow or water through a hose. The hose is guiding the water, creating a nice flow. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're working towards. So as I look at her and I start to relax, there's a sense of a flow that starts to happen. And that's what you want to create. Now you do that by feeling your whole body, just like your whole body's the hose, the, the conduit for the energy, for the flow and the, emotion, the energy being the emotion between you and her. And that's, that's the, the, the third thing we want to look at in this video series. And then we can just relax and talk and be like, so how are you doing today? And I can create a container and then she can surrender into it. Um, is there anything you want to say about that? It's very, very um, pleasant for a woman to have that, that experience because it allows us to expand to the experience that you're creating for us and uh, just enjoy it. So this brings up another topic and I think this is why this is so important. Uh, for women, on average, men don't walk through the world necessarily feeling afraid all the time. Uh, maybe if they have extreme nice guy syndrome, they do. They probably wouldn't admit it if they did, though. Um, but they don't walk through the world feeling like they could potentially be in danger. But on average, women do. How often in a, in a month, a, well, within, a, within one month period, is how often do you feel like you could potentially be in danger? <laughs> Well, let me put it this way. Ask me about a day and I can okay. tell you at least one or two moments when I could be in potential danger as a woman. So this is important. Like this. Very, very important. So what is the one of the number one things you're looking for from a masculine man? If a man's domain is the domain of tension mm -hmm. and you're around masculine men that are really grounded, solid, non-reactive and good with tension, how does that make you feel? It feels safe. They're creating that container, so she feels safe. Go ahead. Which is something that you want to have as a woman, because we that's what we're looking, first of all, in a man, for the safety that he comes with him. And if he's like all like 
scared or very very soft and what can what kind of safety can he provide for you as a woman no. yeah and then she has to provide it which is not what she's built for right and so as the masculine we're built to provide this nice container of safety which allows you to relax and fully be a woman which is where the a lot of the attraction comes from and so this is really powerful and important this is why women want men to be confident more than nice they want men to be real more than nice so they can go out and handle the shit and protect her and her babies in primitive times. Now today it's a different world, but it still applies basically. Dangers are still here, so. Yeah, yeah. We're not in the wild. She doesn't, she's not gonna get tackled by a, a saber tooth tiger or whatever, you know, <laughs> but things can happen. Yeah. And so still having that sense of community with men that are providing structure they really appreciate. So the fourth thing I want to cover in this video series is the whole process of understanding uh, goal setting from start to finish in this area, like how to use tension to set a goal and achieve that goal from start to finish and where, what your starting point needs to look like, what your end point needs to look like and all the points in between how you make them happen in a relaxed way where you create more of a, you work on getting more and more into flow each time so that everything flows from start to finish. And this is where I see a lot of clients, I have to really reframe them a lot and change the way they look at the world because they're always trying to get, they're trying to get to point B to get away from point A. And it just doesn't work that way. If you hate point A and you're trying to get to point B, trust me, point B will be really hard to get to. And if you get there, you won't be happy anyways, because then point B won't be any good because, you know, until you resolve your issues with point A and then move to point A out of out of feeling like that grounded, solid, confident man that she likes, where, you know, that he knows that he, yeah, I've got my point A and now I'm building something even bigger versus I hate this place and I want to go to that place. Then it's really hard to accomplish goals. Goals fail all the time because of this, because we're reactive in the whole process running from something. Yeah, it's like you wanted to build a house and you don't have a solid base for the house. It will just crumble and fall. Crumbles and falls. So when you see a man with a purpose, this is what this really comes back to, this fourth point. A man that does this well, this is my solid space and I'm creating a better solid space. And he, so he has a sense of purpose and drive and I'm going to go out and make this happen because I'm excited versus scared. Can you yes. talk about the difference in that? Well, actually, this is something that I really uh, am looking in a, in a partner, his willingness to grow and uh, develop, which allows me the space to grow and develop with him. Whereas if I'm growing alone and he's like staying in the same space, there's not much space to grow with him within that relation. So um, grow together. Yeah. And so, so this is why when you see it, talk about when you see a man that has a hard time finding, like he's lost, he doesn't have a sense of purpose or direction. He doesn't know what he wants and he's what, what is that guy like? Uh, not my kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that but... says it all right there. Okay. But it's the same for men too, right? When you have a woman that's completely disoriented, it's not something very appealing to that because yeah. it's like, wh where can you go? I mean, the, it doesn't give the, uh, structure and the safety space you want which comes from a place where you know what you want you are very decisive and have a have a plan have an idea of well you... men want to give these gifts a structure and and you just said something else that's really important a really good woman that understands this will create a place for him to create structure for her as and to receive it and appreciate it which makes him feel needed makes him feel appreciated wanted by her and then and that starts to create that cycle and that flow whereas other women a lot of women today are like i can do it all myself i can do it all myself and that's that makes the man feel like, well, do you need me? You know, and that shuts off men, men off. I mean, uh, it's it's very common that some empowered women would do that just to prove that they are all independent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not really your power. I mean, if you have to prove that you have a power, then you don't have it. Because yeah. power can be seen as goes for men as well. I mean, power can be seen. You don't have to say I have power. And nature, nature knows what it's doing, right? Mm -hmm. So nature created men and women as a balance to each other, not to fight with each other. And unfortunately, uh, we've lost that balance. You know, people mm -hmm. are trying to be everything and then you can be happy, complete and whole without somebody else, mm -hmm. but you can expand much bigger and much greater with somebody else as you work as a team and you actually complete each other. And that's the beautiful part. So let's say she can be her own masculine. That doesn't mean that she's gonna, uh, uh, sh she's gonna want to be all the time or function her best that way, or, or that she wants to build, uh, let's say she wants to build a big business and has another masculine partner that really grounds her in doing the work that she does within her business. 
that allows her to grow that much bigger and vice versa, either both ways. When we both understand how to dance in the masculine and feminine, we can actually consciously choose to do this. And so this gets a little off topic, but because we're getting into the dance of the masculine and feminine, but it's still not really, because it all comes back to this idea of tension and then emotion, which is what she's using. She's using physical tension or emotion to dance with my literal direct tension. So we're gonna get deeper into this with the videos, but these are the kind of the ideas I wanted to discuss or I wanted to break down. So let's take a deeper look at the next video and the first topic. And the first topic in this scenario is that uh, is basically the tension causes reaction and what that looks like, what that does. And then we'll go into the other three topics and the three following videos. So anything else you wanna say? I don't know. Well, you can say you got three more videos to say it. So uh, she's got plenty of time. So with that said, make sure to like the video if you liked it. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to comment below. We really love your comment. Oh, by the way, on the subscribe part, hit that notification button too, because a lot of people uh, aren't hitting the notification button and they don't get our videos. So if you want to get all the videos, hit that button. Make sure to comment below. We want to hear your questions. We want to hear what you want to hear more of. Uh, I'm sure Anna Maria wants to see what you feel about her and in, in these reactions and and she's a sweetheart and you're gonna see a lot Thank more you. of her in our videos she's gonna be around quite a bit and so with that said remember only the confident really live see you in the next video